seems like forever since I've actually done a video on this damn thing. Probably because it has been. Well, after a month of being lazy, I thought I'd get back on it by doing a nice little game review on one of my favorites for the Genesis. Dynamite Heady. Oh yeah, this one's a classic. Not only was this game pretty much up there with Comic Zone in terms of creativity, but it was also just generally a really unique 2D platformer. The game itself actually takes place inside of a puppet show, and you assume the role of a character named Hetty, who has a detachable head. That's pretty unique, even by today's standards. All has been well in the land of weird puppet-like people. Well, until some douchebag named Dark Demon took over. Looks like old Dee Dee's reign of terror just started recently, as he's getting all the toys organized into two categories. Those who are worthy to serve him, and those who are not. And the latter, get the can. Teddy is one of the latter characters. Being labeled as not worthy, he's about to get trashed. Unfortunately for Demon, Hetty makes a daring escape and is now off to beat that guy's ass. Can Hetty defeat the evil Dark Demon? And save the place? Well, that's pretty much for you to find out, right? Now, the game itself is, of course, a 2D platformer. With a couple of twists. You'll run around, jump on platforms, and give enemies head. And by that, I mean you'll throw your head at your enemies and kill them. Well, why? What did you think I meant? Fucking pervert. Yes, using your detachable head, not only will you hurt enemies, but you'll also get it to grab items onto those little ledge thingies and to solve a bunch of puzzles. The puzzles themselves are pretty damn sweet and creative. From hitting switches to make platforms rise and fall, to spinning fan-like platforms around, to making a level turn upside down, and a bunch of others. Now, if you've played any other old-school treasure classics like Gunstar Heroes or Alien Soldiers, then you probably wouldn't think that this was a game made by them. But the randomly appearing sub-bosses will keep you reminded that this is indeed one of their ruthless challenges. Now, you'll get three supporting characters, or at least weird things that look like supporting characters, that'll help you out through your magical puppet-style quest. Headcase, who'll give you power-ups. Hangman, who you can grab onto to get to higher ledges. And Biu, I think that's how you say it, who points out targets and is pretty useful in boss battles because she'll point out where the boss's weakness is. Yay! Controls are pretty straightforward for a Genesis game. The D-pad moves Hetty around. Usually it's just left or right, but levels that have flying or 3D elements in it will also use the up and down ones, naturally. You can jump, you can throw your head at people, and you can cancel the power-up you have in case you don't want it anymore. Although there are a few, like the weight head, that can't be canceled until it times out. Hetty is definitely one modular puppet, as he's got a bunch of power-ups at his disposal. He's got a vacuum head, which will suck everything on the screen up, including power-ups and health. A hammer head, which will increase his attack power and let him break through certain walls. A tiny head, which will make him small, allowing him to get into tight areas. A spiky head, which serves a dual purpose of being an attack power up as well as letting him climb walls, kind of like Rystar. Hell, even the 2D shooter levels actually have their own special power ups, including a rocket head, which shoots lasers, a plane head, which bombards the screen with bullets, kind of like Contra Spreader, and lets him shoot left or right. And this stupid piece of shit eagle head, which is pretty much only useful for the final boss in that section of the game. I mean, seriously, what the crap? Just... Fuck! You can't shoot up with this thing and it sucks! Which is why I recommend you don't use it until the final boss where it's actually useful. Not all power-ups are good for you, though. For example, the weighted head. This thing will actually make you move incredibly slow and won't let you attack. So be careful not to get that one or else you're gonna be screwed in the boss encounter. Now, the game itself is pretty easy. Until you get to the halfway point, then the difficulty shifts dramatically. Definitely one thing that'll turn a lot of people off, though, is definitely the randomly shifting difficulty and the odd scarcity of free lives. And believe me, unless you know the secret to some of these bosses, they can be tough badasses. But whether you can get to the end or not, it's still fun. The game is pretty hard, and later on, you're gonna need some pinpoint accuracy in order to do some stuff, like this whole thing when you're swinging on the hangman dudes. 
Wow. Speaking of the difficulty, did you know that the Japanese version of this game is actually a crap load easier than the North American version? Nope, I'm not kidding. For some reason, they decided to go the reverse route, and instead of making it easier for the stupid Americans, they decided to make us look even stupider by having us play the harder version. Treacherous. A little random bit of trivia for you, too. A lot of the characters' names and even a couple of color palettes are different in the Japanese version. With an exception of Mariyama, because I like that name better than Trouble Bruin, all the other names that I've mentioned so far are from the American version. Now one thing that Treasure has always been really well known for is the ability to make a game that looks and sounds great and plays just as good, and Dynamite Heady is no exception. Graphically, the game is beautiful for a game made in 94, and each level really looks like it's got a personality of its own. Whether it's a giant balloon robot poodle thing, to a boss that actually grows up as you fight him, the creativity is definitely on an all-time high here, and that's one of the things that makes this game shine. Hell, one of the floors in the earlier levels in the game is made entirely out of 3D blocks that tilt back and forth. The soundtrack is great, and has that kind of hyperactive feel that most treasure games have, which is definitely awesome. At the same time, it definitely sounds a little bit more mellow and groovy, which is also pretty cool. But of course, the most charming part of it all is the fact that the game takes place inside a puppet show, and it never forgets it either. You'll constantly see scenes randomly change, and it's especially noticeable in the infamous tower level when you see pieces of the backdrop missing, and the backstage is revealed. Hell, there's even a small Matayama encounter that looks like it takes place backstage. And a very infinite looping backstage. Or, I don't know. Whenever you defeat a major boss, you'll get an applause. And if you get game over, the audience will boo you off the stage. Classic. This game is definitely a great one. And it's pretty easy to find, too. If you got a PlayStation 2, you can always snag a copy of that special volume of the Sega Ages library called the Gunstar Heroes Treasure Box. And if you got a Wii, you can always download it on the Virtual Console. If you're a hardcore fanatic, though, I'd recommend the PS2 way, because not only do you get three games, Dynamite Heady as well as Gunstar Heroes and Alien Soldier, but you also get multiple region versions of each game, as well as a crap ton of concept art. If you're looking for a classic that's fun and pretty challenging, then give this one a shot. I'm pretty sure you'll like it. And for only 800 Wii points, it's definitely worth it. Hmm, something about that picture doesn't seem right. Looks like he's fucking groping that ball. Yum, yum.